Take a look, see if you missed number 16. If I were doing 16, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it, but I would do this. I would simplify the top and simplify the bottom and then see what I could cross cancel or cross out. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite the 6 up there. When I put the x's that are on top together, what do I get? I have an x to the negative 2 and an x to the fifth. If you put those together, what do you get? Right? X to the third. Because when you multiply these things, you, subtract, you add their exponents together. So you have 5 there and minus 2 there. So you get an x to the third power, x cubed. You have a y and a y, and that gives you a y squared y times y, and 1 plus 1. On the bottom, you have 2x squared y. Uh, and now, you can cross off identical things on top and bottom. Really, on top, you have 3x's times themselves, and 2y's. On the bottom, you have 2x's times themselves, and 1y. So you can cross off this x with this x. The second x with the second x. There's no other x's on the bottom, so that x is going to stay there. 1y crosses off with 1y there. 1y's on the bottom. 2 goes into 6 three times, so you're left with a 3xy. Another way you could have done it, if you didn't like that negative 2 exponent, you could have moved that x down to the bottom and made it x to the positive 2 which would give you an x to the fourth on the bottom and an x to the fifth still on top, you'll still get this. More than one way to kind of do that problem. Maggie? Um, can you do that? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to refer back to something I'm not seeing. This one right here? Well, says if angle B measures 61 degrees, that's right here, correct? Then what is the measure of D A B? Anybody want to help me out here? There is a thing that says with parallelograms, children, and I'm pretty sure we talked about this. I get classes mixed up here. What do you know about what we call adjacent angles? In other words, this angle and this angle have a relationship. Does anybody know what that relationship is? Not mother, father, not daughter, brother, not sister, brother, not aunt, uncle. Alex, it is? Yeah. Or we call that, they're supplementary. Adjacent angles in a parallelogram are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So if you know that this one is 61 degrees, and again, you have to kind of forget about that diagonal. Pretend it's not there because that's we don't care about that. You're looking at DAB. What number added to 61 degrees gives you 180? That would be 119 degrees. Shall I do the rest of these while we're here? Yes, because let's do it. Area of a parallelogram, children. I noticed a bunch of you got this wrong on a quiz I think we just had there. The area of a parallelogram is base times height. And it's very important that you call it base times height, not length times width or not side times side. Base and the height have to form right angles. It's key. The only right angle you see is right here, and that's what tells you the base and the height. The base is 10, the height is 7. So the area of this is 7 times 10, which is 70. Oh, but it asked me for the triangle, didn't it? Sorry. We're looking at triangle ABC, so take that away because it's one half base times height. How many of you were looking at me in shock and disbelief? But same thing is true. Base and the height have to be right angles, so it's still going to be 10 times 7, but it's going to be cut in half because it's a triangle. So it's going to be 35. The area of triangle ABC. Is that right? Oh, area of parallelogram was for number 10. That would have been the base times the height. And that would have been the 70 inches. 
Right there, kids, you've got three problems. Should be three easy problems to get ready. Just remember, it's not 10 times 8. 8 is nothing to do with that. The only reason you need the 8 there would be to find the parameter of all that. Good night, James. What's going on over there? Cameron Atkins, sir. Number 9. A coin is tossed and a number cube is rolled. Did you have to write down those things? You got a coin. Here's my picture of a coin. It is tossed and a number cube is rolled. What's the probability of getting a heads and an even number? Okay. Remember, this was, we talked about this, this is probability. Uh, if you're looking for both of those, rolling a head and getting an even number, what's your probability of rolling, flipping a head? Half. What's the probability of rolling an even number? One half. The probability of both of those happening are their probabilities multiplied together. So its probability is one half times one half, which is one quarter. A quarter of the time, you should get a head and a little thing. Now, yeah, and I can, so you got one. But then you didn't add them. You could actually do the little tree diagram and do it. Look, you can flip and get a head, you can flip and get a tail. And then after you flip, you have to roll the dice, which means you can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. One, two, three, four, five, or six. And here you can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. If you are doing the sample space of all your possible outcomes, you can get a head one, head two, head three, head four, head five, head six. You can get a tail one, tail two, tail three, tail four, tail five, tail six. Those are all your combinations, correct? But I wanted a head and an even number. So the only heads and even numbers are this one, head two, head four, head six. You get three out of a total of how many combinations are there here? Twelve. And guess what that reduces down to? One fourth, which is what we got when we multiply. Brooke Kell. Eighteen? Is that on this page? Anybody want to enlighten me on multiplication of scientific notation? It's like a two-step thing. Alex, what do I do? I wouldn't take away the parentheses. Multiply three and four. Right. Multiply the two left things together, and right away, Brooke Kala and all of you seventh graders, take note of this. This right away causes a problem. The problem is, I was given two things in scientific notation, and my answer needs to be in scientific notation, and 12 will never be in scientific notation. So in your mind, when you see that 12, you got to think, in the end, i got to fix this, because it's not going to be in scientific notation. Times 10. What do I do for the rest of that? Again, I am multiplying these two together. Logan, what happens when I multiply? Yeah, so move the decimal. So no, 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 not yet. We're not there yet. I need to multiply 10 to the negative 4th times 10 to the 3rd. Then you add. Negative. And what do you get when you add negative 4 and negative 3? Or negative 7. Negative 7. So how many of you had this? Okay. That, unfortunately, is close, but like I said, it's not in scientific notation, so you need to change it. And that's what I write a note to myself for tomorrow, make sure it's in scientific notation. You need the decimals here. It needs to be put right there. So my 12 is going to change to 1.2, but when I move that decimal, this exponent is going to change. And here's the way I remember it. If I make this number one smaller, which I did, I need to make this one bigger. This should have been minus 7, right? So a negative 7 plus 1 is a negative 6. If you make this number smaller, the exponent has to become bigger. If you make the exponent bigger, that has to be smaller. 
adding these together, negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. So hopefully this was the answer. What did you get for an answer, Brooke? 10 to the 8. Did you forget that that is negative 7? When you multiply two negatives, give you a positive. When you add two negatives together, you get a bigger negative number. Ava Rickner. Number six. Then on the bottom of the top. What is the length of a diagonal of a rectangle that is 24 inches long and 10 inches wide? Ten inches wide <coughs> and the question was what? What is the question? The question is how long is this diagonal? Anybody know how I'm gonna find that out? Alex? Correct, because this is a right triangle. Rectangles have all right angles. Okay. And here is your triangle. So you look, and hopefully there's a 1024 triangle over here, and you can have these for your tests or whatever. There is not. Okay. So then I have to think, well, is this a dilated, a bigger triangle of a smaller Pythagorean triple? But you look at this and say, okay, I got the numbers 10 and 24. What can you do to 10 and 24? You can cut them both in half. Which would look like this. Let's draw it up here. If I cut this in half and I cut this in half, it becomes a 5 and a 12. Is there a 5 and a 12? Yes. So that means this is 13. That is not the answer for the long diagonal. That's the base triangle. Okay, the base triangle is half the size of the big one, so I need to redouble that to get back up to what the original triangle was. This should be 26 inches for the diagonal. Maybe sharp, sharp, sharp. Okay, sharp. Mm -hmm. yep. Caitlin. Hi, number three. Number three. Number three, kids. Oh, yeah. Did you draw a sketch it out? Yeah. A yardstick, first of all, that tells you this. A yardstick is three feet long. Cast a shadow 24 inches long. We should probably make this 36 inches to be consistent, right? At the same time, a flagpole casts a shadow that is 16 feet, right? So here's my flagpole. It's 16 feet. Let's just make them triangles so we know. How tall is the flagpole? And people, this is what I jot in my notes. You are looking at this, you're looking at the small, put the small up here, and the big over here. And you are writing down the height and the shadow. And you can have those interchanged, it doesn't matter if height's on top or bottom. Okay, what is the height of the small triangle? 36 inches. Uh, what's the shadow of the small triangle? 24 inches. Height of the big triangle, we don't know, and the height... So the shadow of the big triangle is 16 feet. How do I do that from there? Make equal fractions. 36 over 24 equals what number over 16? Suggestions from there? Just cross multiply and set them equal to each other, cross products, or Kaylin? Can you reduce this? What number goes into both of those? Six. If I divide them both by six, this is six over four, right? Now can I go from four to sixteen? Absolutely. Times four. Six times four is twenty-four. And that's what this would be. The big tron the big pole, the big triangle is twenty-four feet tall.
I would say make sure you change this into the same unit of measurement. These two don't have to be the same as long as you do your ratio like this. But these certainly do. You don't want to make this yards and that inches because then you'd end up with what? 16 times something would be some huge old number there. Note to sell. Taylor! Number one, children. Uh, and number one, I definitely would do a percent box. And please know, problem number one is not an increase in percent. It doesn't say he charged this much or it was a sale or anything like that. It just says a bill was cut into two different parts. What was my parts? It was uh, parts plus labor equals total. Here's my percent, and here's my actual. We know the total repair bill was $120. Sorry, I guess I put one I know that it was $36 for parts, so how much was it for labor? How about 84? That is a lot of weight pounds in the insurance class. What class in there? That would make sense. Uh, total percent is always 100. Which one do I need to know? Do I want, I just want the percent for labor, so I find my labor. I want to know this number right here. So there are all the parts. I don't need this. What number over 100 is equal to 84 over 120? Again, that one doesn't work out nicely, so you're going to try to reduce. What do you think? Divided by 4? Probably something more than that. But you get 21 over 30. Can I reduce that any farther? Sure. Divided by 3, I get 7 over 10. Oh, look at that. 10 times what is 100? Anybody? And so 7 times 10 is 70. 70% 70 would be 30% would be parts. Maybe four dollars per day. That's probably going for about half an hour of work to these days. Shawl Hamer. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, you do number seven. Number seven. How many do you have left to do, Ross? Two parts of that one. First one says to do what, Logan? Solve. Did you get the solving part? <coughs> well, yeah, this is not this would you would have been here for this because this is nothing new. This is just like an equation. How do you solve this equation? How do I get x by itself? I'm going to subtract. Subtract two. So x is now less than one. It's solved. And then how do I graph that? Here at the number one, open or close circle. Open because it's not equal. What side am I shading? The less than side. And again, I always look at this as my clue. The arrow I get when I shade is going to go this way, so it has to be shaded on this side. X is less than 1. Maggie! How do you find the percentage from the 15? I don't know. What is the percentage? Is that that? Is that that? Uh, well, the first thing you have to do is, well, there's two different ways. Somebody want to somebody wanna throw me what, what you would do for percent? Alex? Um, I take 12 and 5. Okay, well, that's what you would do to find the decimal. Okay, which, which is part of fine. Once you know the decimal, you can find the percent. Uh, 12 does go into 5. Put your decimal and bring it straight up. Uh, you get uh, 4. Sorry, it was 48. You get 20, you get 1, 12, you get 8. See, the deal is with this, though. We try not to, and what do you keep getting? 6 is repeater. Okay, now that's your decimal, but that doesn't work very well as a percent. Like I said, we don't usually mix repeating decimals with percents. So what you could do is go back here and just say, okay, you know it's 41, right, for the percent, maybe? And then what is repeater 6 is what fraction? No. 
Computer 6 is what fraction? Look on your little handy dandy sheet on your notebook there. What is 0. 0.6 repeat? Point six repeater is what fraction? Two thirds. If you want to just do straight up percentages, just remember this. Five over twelve, if you want percent, maybe, you want to know five over twelve is what number over a hundred. So you could figure it out like this as well. Do your cross multiplication. Twelve times what number equals five hundred? And that would give you the whole percent and the fraction all at once. Uh, like I said, I would probably accept 41.6 repeater as a percent. You probably not mark it wrong, but it's kind of a little, it's kind of a frowned upon in the mathematics circles to put repeating decimals with percents. If the decimals work out, it's a little bit better, but they don't. Alex! How do you remember how do you get the linear equation for eight? Eight? Yes. Were you given the graph? Yes. What's, what's that? The graph. You just want the equation of that line. Yeah, how do you find it? So I'll, I'll, we'll go with that. First thing you start off with is the linear equation, the generic form, which is y equals mx plus b, correct? The letter B stands for what? Um, where it crosses the y-axis. So where it does it cross the y-axis. So there you substitute negative 1 in for B. You still have the X. Now you need to find out what the letter M is, which is the slope of that line, which means you have to somehow find a triangle amidst all this. Here, let's blow this up. And this is where the difficult part comes in. Okay, you've got to find two points where it's a coordinate. Well, you know one is right here, and it looks like you could do another one right here. So you draw, go straight across with this one, straight down with this one. Looking at this triangle, slope is how high it is over how wide it is. How high is that triangle? It is one unit high. And how wide is it? Two units. One unit high over two units wide. Is it positive or negative slope? Going uphill is positive slope, so you can just leave it as such. I should change colors. I'm using the red a long time. So close to being done. But how many red left? Taylor, did you have a question? Number 17. Number 17. I would guess if you struggled with number 17, maybe the issue is that negative exponent. Somebody help me out. Negative exponents with fractions, what happens? By the way, I said this somebody on the Google Plus. Negative exponents have absolutely nothing to do with whether your answer is negative or positive. Just because something has a negative one exponent doesn't mean it makes it a negative or a positive. Or nothing to do with it, right? You make you take it reciprocal to Yeah. You just flip over the fraction and you make the exponent positive, which two-thirds to the first power is two-thirds, so you don't even have to worry about it. So what is three-halves minus two-thirds? Well, it's not multiplication, it's subtraction. Changing to common denominators is, looks like, uh, nine-sixths minus four-sixths, which ends up being five-sixths. Keep on. Who? Two zero? I love it. Thoughts, Kebron? How do you think you solved that? If 
they were numbers, what would you do? Cabron, if this said this, 7x plus 3 equals 9, what would you do first? Subtract what? Right, so you do that with this. You subtract the 3 fourths. I subtract the 3 fourths. Uh, that is 9 eighths minus 6 eighths. And I get 3 eighths. I still have 7 eighths over here. And this boils down to what happens when there's a fraction in front of a letter? Multi bazillion dollar question. Somebody help me out here. Mass and moment, how do I get rid of it? What do I multiply? Multiply by 8 sevenths, because that would make this cross off. Multiply by 8 sevenths. 8 cross off, and you're left with 3 over 7. Oh, I love five. Speedometer on Maury's car shows the speed both miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Using 1.6 kilometers as the equivalent for one mile, find the mile per hour rate that is equivalent to 80 kilometers per hour. This, ladies and gentlemen, is just crossing off labels, unit multiplier. I know I have this. I'm starting with this, Madison, right? So what fraction is that? 80 kilometers per hour, what you would write as what fraction? 80 kilometers over one hour, right? That's my speed. I need to change kilometers into miles, so I'm going to multiply by the fraction that has what, where, and why. I want kilometers to cross off, so where do kilometers have to go in my other fraction? On the bottom. I'm changing it into miles, so miles have to go on top. I just now need to know what numbers go with that. And it says right here, 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. So 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. Kilometers cross off, which is what you want. I'm left with miles per hour. Now it's 80 over 1.6. What is that? That's division. 80 divided by 1.6 or 16 into 800, which ends up being a big block of 50. 50 miles per hour. 50 mph. Other ones, people? Caitlin? Number four. I was hoping that one would come up. No, I don't think you did. Sales tax rate, 7.5%. Anybody? Tax and tip is what type of problem? Multiplication, always. You want to know what 7 and 1.5% of 164 dollars is. Now, the problem may come in here is changing 7 and 1 half percent to a decimal. Anybody? How do I change 7 and 1 half percent to a decimal? Well, maybe it would be helpful to think about this. Remember I said you never write percents as decimal? Well, 7 and 1 half percent is the same as 7.5 percent. And if I'm changing 7.5 to a decimal, or 7.5% to a decimal, what do I do? Cameron? Two places. So my equivalent for this is 0 0.075, 7.5%. So I need to take $164 by, multiply it by 0 0.075. 5 times 4 is 20, 32, 820, what is 0, 0.8, 2, 42, 44, 4, 11, great, we're out of room, 0, 0, 3, 2, 1. 1, 2, 3 decimal places, 1, 2, 3 decimal places, looks like $12.30. Does that help? <coughs> yeah, I 
Yeah. What would be 7 and 1 fourth as a decimal? Somebody? 7 and 1 fourth percent as a decimal. Stupert? 0.0725. Yep, 0 0.0725. What about 7 and 1 eighth percent as a decimal? Maybe? Um, like well, 1.25, yeah. Because this is what 1 eighth is as a decimal point, 1.25, you just tack that on at the end. Ava! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's right there on the corner of my desk. By all means, don't ever let me stop you from man. Madison? 19. Is that one of our few Equations are all done the same, Madison. I want to get x by itself. So what do I have to get rid of first? Nope. You say 0 0.2? No. You always... This probably threw you off because usually you write this the other way around. Usually it's written like this. 0.2x plus 0.8 equals 1.2. You deal with the x term last. You want to get rid of the other term first. So how do I get rid of 0.8? I just subtract 0.8. If I subtract 0.8 from that, I end up with 0.4. And now, Madison, I have 0.02x still on this side equals 0.4. How do I get the x by itself? I divide by 0.02. Not 0.02, just 0.2. Sorry. What is 0.4 divided by 0.2? Well, we might have to do this out. 0.2 into 0.4 is 2 into 4 is 2. I hope that worked. Is that right? Is that all? Am I close? By the way, kids, this will be, if you want to review this at home, this will be online here at, well, I guess it's gone again. How does that happen? Do I not get my past thing there? www.justconfusing.com? There's a keyboard on here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. You need to have it. Where's your keyboard? Where? Uh, you have to, like, do accessories. Find the key. There is no accessories. Oh, it's what? Quick view, spotlight, more tools, magnify, web browser, control, click tool, record, view, text tool. Go to start, go to start, and then accessories. No, I'm not going to start accessories. Just know that 